Hello everyone and welcome to this Boosted Films tutorial video. Before we begin, I just want to say that today's video is sponsored by absolutely nobody. And that's great for you because what I'm going to do is give you the part numbers of all the components I bought in the video description down below. You can look them up on your own and you can get this budget time and belt job done for around 200 and some dollars if you choose to do so. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at changing the timing belt and timing belt components in this 2003 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8. And this should work for the same for all Evo 8 and Evo 9 engines. And as always, perform anything you see in this video at your own risk. I am not responsible for anything you do that might damage your engine. If you're not comfortable in your own abilities, just pay someone else to do it. This video is basically for entertainment value because you want to hear me talk and I'm such a good speaker. So the first thing I want to point out about this job is it's actually a lot easier when the engine is outside of the car. However, most of you are not going to remove your engine to do this job because you really don't need to. But the good news for you is having the engine out of the car is going to make it a lot easier to see all the components and see the timing marks and really get a good look at everything that we need to do. All right, chapter one, let's break down all the components. We're going to start at the top of the engine and work our way down. The first thing you're going to see rotating here are your cam gears. And as they rotate up, you'll see the dowel pins on the cam gears come to the top. And straight up from those dowel pins, you're going to see a timing mark that I have marked in white. And that also is going to line up with the timing marks that are marked on the valve cover. Next, we're going to move down just below those cam gears to some pulleys. The first pulley we're going to show in the middle of the screen here is our tensioner pulley. And just to the right of that is our idler pulley. And to the left of the tensioner pulley is our water pump. Now after that tensioner pulley is removed and out of the way, you'll be able to see the tensioner arm. Now just below that tensioner arm is our auto tensioner. And below that auto tensioner, we have our crankshaft timing sprocket. And towards the back of the engine, we have the rear balance shaft components. First thing we're pointing out here is the balance shaft pulley. And you can also see that rear balance shaft belt. And before we can remove the rest of those balance shaft components, we have to remove our crankshaft angle sensor. Next, we got the crankshaft sensor blade. And again, just showing that balance shaft belt, which is attached to the rear balance shaft gear. And all you're really seeing here is that balance shaft gear, but behind that is the actual balance shaft. And we also have the crankshaft balance belt sprocket. And one final component that we're going to point out here is the front balance shaft. The front balance shaft is definitely one of the tricky parts when it comes to getting this job done right. So I'm just going to mention that now, but we're going to come back to the exact details later. All right, chapter two, timing marks. Where are they? Now the most obvious timing marks we've already talked about, they're on the valve cover and they're going to line up with our cam gears. And there's also a top dead centered timing mark on your timing cover that should match up with your harmonic balancer. There'll be a notch in your balancer that should match up. And a quick note about that harmonic balancer slash crankshaft pulley, uh, there's a 22 millimeter bolt that holds that in place. That bolt is torqued very tight. So for removing most everything with this job, you won't need air impact tools, but you will really want one to get that bolt off. You'll also notice that there's a timing mark on the rear balance shaft and a timing mark on the front balance shaft. If we remove our crank pulley, you're going to see a timing mark behind that crank pulley as well. So now I'm just going to show a little wider picture of where exactly all these timing marks are located. They're not all directly visible in this photo, but again, this should give you a general feel for where all those timing marks are. Chapter three, removal. Now we're going to remove pretty much all the components that we talked about earlier. But before we start actually removing the components, it's a good idea to probably take some photos, document where everything is located, how everything was bolted on, and also check the tension of the timing belt itself and kind of get a feel for how much tension the belt had before you took it off. Now obviously you've already removed a lot of items to get this far, but all we're really covering in this video are the actual timing components. And the first item you're actually going to want to loosen up is that tensioner pulley. And also, if you did buy a timing belt tool kit, you'll have a cam holder that will kind of hold the cams in place and kind of keep them from moving. 
They're going to want to sit in a little bit different position when there's no belt holding them in place. And I have a good example of that here. I did end up buying the timing belt toolkit, but I did not have it when I removed this timing belt. And if you watch the exhaust cam gear here, you'll see basically that when the belt's removed, that the cam gear is going to want to rotate back and just fall to a more natural position. Now it is okay if you don't have the cam gear stop in place when you remove the belt. You'll be able to adjust them later to line up those timing marks when you do the install. So next thing after the belt's removed is we're going to unbolt our auto tensioner. Just two bolts holding that in place. And then we continue by removing some other components. We're going to remove our tensioner pulley here. And then we're going to take off the bolt that holds the tensioner arm in place. And once that bolt is removed, the tensioner arm should also come off. And then we're going to remove the bolt that holds on the idler pulley. Now here I'm just kind of showing how my cam gears were not lined up when I didn't have anything to hold them in place. This was just where they kind of wanted to sit after I took the belt off. Next we're going to remove the balance shaft tensioner pulley. And again, before we can remove the rest of those balance shaft components, we're going to remove this crankshaft angle sensor. And once that sensor is out of the way, we should be able to go ahead and remove that crankshaft sensor blade. And it's a good thing to pay attention to the way that crankshaft sensor blade is on there because it is technically possible to put it on the wrong way. But we're going to touch on that again in just a moment. And then we're just going to remove that balancer belt and get that out of the way. And now that the belt's out of the way, you can see that I actually put that crankshaft sensor blade back on. And you can see that I'm marking kind of where that timing divot is and where that should line up. And right behind that blade, you're going to see on that balance shaft sprocket, there's a little dot that that's going to line up with. So you're going to want to make sure that that little notch is going to basically match up with the divot in that gear. So if it was put on basically upside down, like you see here, you notice that that divot doesn't match up with that timing mark on the sprocket. And finally, for removal, you can remove that crankshaft balance belt sprocket and probably just clean it up and put it back on unless you're cleaning up everything else around the area. The next thing is kind of optional to remove, and that's your water pump. But I would recommend changing your water pump while you're doing your timing components because really there is no way to change your water pump without removing your timing components. So it's a good thing to do at the same time. I did make an entirely separate video on how to change that water pump. So if you want to check out that video as well, if you're changing your water pump, feel free to check out my channel to find that video. Chapter four, the pesky rear balance shaft. I am going to show you how to install that rear balance shaft belt in this video, but I'm going to let you know that some people treat this belt as optional and not everyone chooses to put this belt back on. Technically this tiny balance shaft belt could break and then take out your main timing belt and nobody wants that. But one thing to note is if you do end up leaving out that rear balance shaft belt, you should still install a balance shaft tensioner pulley just so that pulley is bolted in place to prevent any oil from coming through that bolt hole. And also regardless of whether or not you decide to install this belt, you do still need to install that crankshaft balance sprocket. And then if you are running the belt, you'll put that belt on and then you're going to want to put on that crankshaft sensor blade. And once those components are in place and your timing marks are lined up, you should be able to put on that tensioner pulley and you should be able to just put some pressure on that tensioner pulley with your hand and pull it up and kind of rotate it clockwise. And while you're doing that, you'll want to torque that bolt on that tensioner pulley to 14 foot pounds. And now again here, I'm just kind of showing where those timing marks should be lined up. So the next step is installing all the things. Let's install all the timing components. If you haven't cleaned up your crankshaft angle sensor yet, I would clean that up a little bit before bolting that back in place. And then you're going to want to torque the bolts holding that on to 78 inch pounds or 6.5 foot pounds. But hey, don't take my word for it. Go ahead, look up the torque specs on your own and verify. And now we're just showing that crankshaft timing sprocket. We're going to put that on the end of the crankshaft and we're going to make sure that the flat side is basically facing towards the engine. And now we're going to move back up to where some of those other pulleys were. And you can see here, I already put the idler pulley in place. And if you took that tensioner arm off like I did, you probably want to put just a little bit of grease on the shaft that that tensioner arm rides on. And then just go ahead and slide that tensioner arm in place and put the bolt back on. And torque that bolt to 16 foot-pounds. 
And once you torque that bolt, the arm should be able to move freely. It's not going to have a wide range of motion, but it should be able to move rather freely. And next, so you don't forget, be sure you torque that idler pulley bolt to 26 foot-pounds. For now, we're just going to put this tensioner pulley in place and get the bolt finger tight. We're going to want to be able to move that pulley later to actually set the tension on the belt. Now we're going to lift up that tensioner arm and we're going to put in the auto tensioner, which is two bolts holding that in place. And we're going to torque those two bolts to 18 foot pounds. So now we're back to the tricky part. We're back to that front balance shaft. So there are two different ways you can go about kind of verifying this is in the right position. One of them involves removing a bolt on the side of the engine where the balance shaft is and inserting a screwdriver. I'll let you look that up on your own if you kind of want to use that method. So the method I'm going to show here is basically figuring out which way that gear wants to fall. When you're rotating it and you kind of release it, it should kind of naturally want to fall up towards that timing mark. So basically right there is good. Thumbs up. But now if you rotate it actually just one full turn, you'll see that it kind of wants to fall away from that timing mark. That's bad. Thumbs down. That's not the right spot that you want it to be in because it wants to fall the other direction. So now I'm just adding this red arrow here so you can verify that this is the timing mark that you want it to line up with and you want it to naturally settle to that position. So now I'm just going back to the top of the engine and showing those cam gear timing marks and showing that I got those lined up. I didn't film myself adjusting those, but you should just be able to put a 17 millimeter wrench on the bolts of those cam gears and adjust them in place. Now, if you don't have the cam gear holders, once you end up putting your belt on, you can kind of use zip ties to hold the cams in place. So now that you have all your components in place, you get to actually put the belt on. This will probably take a couple tries. Be patient. Note that the first time I did this, the timing marks were not quite lined up right, so I did have to take the belt off and do it again. So once you do have the belt on everything and it looks like it's in place, you're gonna wanna use your tensioner pulley and if you bought the timing belt tool kit this is definitely a place where the tools will come in handy allowing you to easily set the tension on this tensioner pulley and actually what you're seeing here is one of my failed attempts if you watch that rear balance shaft when i do put tension on the belt you'll see that that balance shaft belt moves and it basically ends up showing me that i'm off a tooth on my timing marks so i have to take the belt off and try to reset and do it again and you can see that they're basically a tooth off considering that the cam gears right now are lined up right where they should be. So finally, after a couple of attempts, I was able to use my tensioner tools to hold tension on that tensioner pulley and then torque that tensioner bolt to 35 foot pounds. And once you've done that, you should pretty much be done. Obviously check your timing marks, make sure they all line up. Uh, you'll wanna remember to pull the grenade pin on that auto tensioner. You'll take that pin out they make sure the tension in the belt feels like it should. And now if you're really observant, you'll probably be able to see that it ended up not running that rear balance shaft belt on this motor, but you can run it in yours if you choose. So that's it guys. That's all I have for this tutorial video. Hopefully I covered everything well, gave you some good information. If I made a mistake anywhere, I'm sure the internet will let me know. And if that's the case, I'm going to update uh, in the video description. So check the video description for updates if anything is wrong. Otherwise, feel free to add to the discussion in the comments section. Let me know if there are any other tricks you know to doing this job easier, better. And also, if you're not watching my video blog series, I really encourage you to do so. Right now, I'm basically doing a whole blog series about building this Evo 8 roller that I have and putting it together. I also have a bunch of other how-to videos on my channel, so feel free to check out my channel. Hopefully you'll want to subscribe and see the other how-to videos I got. Check out some of the racing videos we got, because obviously we like to have a lot of fun with these cars as well. And just like everyone else in the world, you can follow me on pretty much any other social media place if you want. Snapchat is Boosted Films. Twitter is Boosted Films. Facebook is Boosted Films. For some reason, Instagram is just Boosted Film. No S. Someone beat me to it. But yeah, go ahead and follow me on those other networks if you want to. So this concludes our Timing Belt How-To video. This is Paul Ellertson from Boosted Films signing off.